thank you for taking time to answer my question last week. And I had a follow up to my question on how to reach out to others. The question is, people do seem to be searching for happiness, but don't seem to know where to look. How do you convince them that studying Torah and doing the right thing can be just as, if not more, fulfilling and enjoyable than watching a football game or instant gratification? They don't seem to want to hear it and don't want to be limited in any way. I've read about the Rebbe's habit of encouraging Jews to put on tefillin. This seems like it might work well, because instead of trying to convince someone of something that they've probably already heard many times, by doing the act of actually putting on the tefillin, they might recognize that this is what is missing. But what would that translate into for non-Jews who do not put on tefillin, and what can someone encourage non-Jews to do? Thanks again, Mel. See, one of, one of the things that we have to be careful with, like, for example, in a marriage, when, a, when one of the spouses, let's say the wife, has found an inspiring uh, motivation for becoming more observant. The husband is not interested. Or the husband is inspired, the wife is not interested. Look at what's going on here. If the wife is inspired, then we understand why she wants to do more mitzvahs. But she's asking her husband to do more mitzvahs without the husband being inspired. So the wife would not be doing mitzvahs unless she had an inspiring experience or, or learning experience. But she wants her husband to be observant without that experience. Not fair. Not, not a proper expectation. So what you would want is for your husband to have his own inspired moment that would make him want to be more observant. But you don't expect him to become observant because you're inspired. So you're skipping a step. <clears throat> and of course, the same is true when the husband is inspired, and now the wife has to follow him in his inspiration. Not fair. In fact, the attempt to inspire others with your inspiration doesn't work. I'm inspired. Can't you see how excited I am? So, you know, catch some of that excitement. You can't borrow excitement. You can't borrow inspiration from another person. And even if you could, it wouldn't last very long. Every person needs their moment when something clicks for them. And of course, we should wish that for everyone. So when you're trying to inspire people, don't, don't try to excite them. Their excitement will have to come from them. If something clicks for them, that's their that's their inspiration. But you can't make it click. You can't push inspiration. When it's like the comedian who says, hey, want to hear a, a funny joke? You, you tell the joke, I'll decide how funny it is. <laughs> but don't tell me it's funny before. before. Also, um, here's a very inspiring thought. Don't say that. It inspired you. It doesn't inspire others. There's no guarantee about that. Just say what it is and see if it, in fact, inspires. So instead of wishing people an inspiration, give them information. Teach something. Share an experience. Don't share the excitement. Let them have their own exciting response. So what can we say to people that, that is meaningful, that is um, helpful, that is, that is necessary. What do we tell people that they really need to hear? 
And if they need to hear it, it'll work. It'll, it'll enlighten them, if not inspire them. It will, it will educate them, which is always a good thing. And, um, it's the part that we can really do for them. The inspiration got to come from within, within themselves. There's a story about a man who was visiting with the Rebbe. He asked the Rebbe, what do you do exactly? What is a Rebbe? And the Rebbe said, my job is to ignite, bring fire to the soul of the Jew and inspire him to whatever, to, to become more observant. At the end of the interview or the end, end of, the, of the visit, the man asked the Rebbe, so have you lit my fire? And the Rebbe said, I've given you the match. Now you can light your own fire. It's really a profound statement. There are people who will easily ignite. They're ready. All they need is a word of encouragement maybe even just a smile, and, and they're ready to go. Because they were ready all along. And also because they're more easily subject to inspiration. This man was a veteran of political his, a career, not easily inspired. So that Ebba says, no, I... I wasn't trying to light your fire. But what we talked about was real good information. Now you have a match. And now you can light your fire. And you need to light your own fire because that's your personality. That's your style. So what we need to do is give people the match. Especially if we don't know them that well. They're not so... Um, eager to be inspired at the moment. So think in the long term. I'll give you a match that works. And when the right moment comes, you'll strike it and it will light your fire. So what is that match? What is that piece of information? I think for our generation, that piece of information is God is waiting for you. The things that God asks of us, whether it's the seven Noahide laws for all human beings or the 613 mitzvahs for the Jew, whatever it is, God is waiting. Because it won't work without your participation. So God is waiting. And uh, that's about all he can do. He cannot take away your freedom of choice. That would ruin the entire plan. He can't force you to do the mitzvah. He waits. Just that little piece of information. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. And it will, it will light your fire. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic, and you're looking for more information, or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it.